I'm from Ireland, and this is Ireland, but only 1.6% of my total viewership is from Ireland. So I thought it would be an interesting idea to take a look at guitar shops around Ireland and just show them off to you. Our first stop is Everest Music located in Bray, and fun fact, I did about a week's work experience a few years ago here. So let's go take a look. I'm doing a video for YouTube about Irish guitar shops. Mm -hmm. Gonna look at each one and, and uh, show what what there is. Yeah, yeah, it's and, gonna showcase. Uh, yeah, and you guys have a lot of cool stuff. So. Yeah, we, we, we're we're pretty proud with with where we've got to at this point. We we've been putting an awful lot of effort over the past couple of years into trying to expand it as best we can to try and offer something interesting while kind of hedging our bets with with not getting crazy stuff that no one wants. Mm. Which is always the, 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 the kind of worry, I suppose, with that kind of stuff. We would get people in asking for kind of specific stuff. Like we've talked to yourself about Ormsby, Ormsby before. We, you know, we, 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 we've got, at the moment, yeah, what are we going to do? There. there. Yeah, we still have the one there. And you know, we'll, we'll probably dip into that a little bit more. It's a little bit niche still. Mm -hmm. We're still yeah. kind of feeling it out. But you know, we'll, we'll move forward with that. Same with the likes of going a little bit left to center with Bacchus, a brand that no one's really ever heard of in this region at least. A uh, Japanese build made from Japanese red pine, which is being attacked by bull, uh, weedles at the moment. So as a conservation effort, they're chopping down the infected trees. So what they did was, Bacchus teamed up with the local government to make use of the trees they chopped down. So you can actually see some of the wormholes where the bugs have ate into the trees. And if you imagine like the little bonsai trees, yeah, basically Japanese red pine is a huge version of that. Really well finished and all around solid guitar. Oh cool, let's, yeah. let's try it. The neck is really, really smooth, and uh, the frets are feel like a kind of a vintage instrument. Like, but the one thing that I really noticed was just how acoustically loud it is. Like, well, the back is have their kind of fancy Japanese stuff. They do have a Chinese range. We've been really impressed with those. They're kind of like four and five hundred euro. The likes of some of their their Indonesian stuff. Half the magic of Bacchus is while they have different plants in a couple of different areas in Asia, they all get quality controlled through Japan. Mm -hmm. So they have a little um, a little facility in uh, Nagano, but it all gets quality controlled through that plant in Japan. They all come from that plant. So really, really decent quality. <coughs> um, really nice kind of flame roasted maple necks. It's becoming more and more popular in the mid range. You know, kind of Sir kind of spearheaded a lot of that stuff early on. And it was kind of reserved for high-end guitars, but the mid-range is really jumping on the roasted maple yeah, trend. The, the Larry Carlton's, the Larry Carlton's have been an absolute boom for us. Started it out with the likes of the, uh, the Marcus Miller basses, and they were always fantastically popular. Actually quite difficult for us to sell other brands in bass because they cover so much ground. Mm. And then the likes of the Electrics, the Strats and the Tellys with Larry Carlton recently, and that's been fantastic because the quality has been there. The, the 3D5 model that they have, um, is based very specifically on Larry Carlton's 335, Mr. 335. That might 335. be an interesting one to try that. Oh, so you're gonna, cool. 
Thanks. Oh, it's heavier than I expected. People kind of think that 55s will be wildly different from Les Pauls, but they cover a much the same ground. Mainly what we try and do here is, is try and, the, the, the term that we, we, we kind of use is curate. We try and kind of curate a, a guitar collection to try and cover as much ground and make it interesting as possible because of where we're located. We're, we're outside of Dublin. It's a destination shop. Um, we don't really have all that much natural footfall like some of the guys in the city centre might. So they have their own kind of battles to, to, to fight when they have footfall like that. Um, but we try and kind of entice people to come out. Yeah, and, and you've, got, you've got pieces that people will come in. Th that's the thing, especially yeah. Since we got Sir, that's been a great one to get people out into the into the shop from wherever they might be. And um, like I live relatively locally, I, I live in kind of South Dublin, and so th that's what I used to do here before I worked here. It would be like, oh yeah, I'll go out and I'll go and visit the place, like I would visit the likes of Jimmy's, like I would visit the likes of Owens yeah. in Sunnec. You know, so it, it, it's the kind of thing where, you know, they're trying to create a, 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 a niche kind of destination. I tried a James Tyler. I've yeah. never tried a James Tyler. It's been refilled in a kind of halfway between a mint green and a surf green. Larger neck profile on it, so it's more like reminiscent of like a 50 strap kind of thing. Yeah, it's chunky. So let's give it a go. All right, so this is a James Tyler, and these are known for their unusual headstock shape, and also because they are used a lot on a huge amount of studio recordings, the LA studio session players always used to use these. Have you tried any of the Woodstocks? No. It's no. definitely worth trying. We, we, we find them very interesting. We're, we're getting them from the same crowd that we get sore from. We had never heard of them before this. Um, they're quite an interesting one. They're actually made in Ukraine. They're not kind of relict per se, but they have that kind of aged feel to them. You can see the kind of checking in the finish. They, they have that kind of, a lot of kind of components of the relic finish. One of the reasons they do like the relic finish is because of the, the feel of it, more so than the aesthetics. I'm a bit of a sucker for both of those aspects, but there's, there's the kind of get the feel of a relic finish without the without the, full on. Without the worn jeans yeah. thing, <laughs> you know. So it, 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 it's it's quite a nice balance. And they hit a really good price point. They're they're somewhere between thirteen and fifteen hundred, depending on the spec. We're kind of aiming for you know the the kind of Nash stuff, that kind of like outside of custom shop, big custom shoppy stuff. He, he CNCs them out. You know, he has like his, his kind of his own thing. Yeah, is is kind of relatively small scale kind of CNC operation. So it is all in house. And um, yeah, we've we've been really happy with them. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Fender and Squire have been put on absolutely blind recently as well. You, you, you'd find that kind of across the board in most of the dealers that, you, that you'd be going to as well. Similarly, with the kind of broad guitar selection, we, we try and get some kind of interesting selections in as much as we can. Everybody's kind of jumping on the Meteoras on the 40th anniversary at the moment because they're kind of relevant. But the likes of some of the more oddball kind of colour combos and stuff like that, we've always quite liked doing in the Squire because you can kind of take a bit more of a chance there. I think my favourite range at the moment in the Fender stuff is probably the Performer. It's the start of, of their American range, and but Bang for Buck has been phenomenal. We try and get in some Japanese stuff as well. That's part of the Japanese stuff, as with the, the telly. So yeah, we, we try and cover as much as we can, but the Fender stuff is always a safe bet. And you've got the Japanese Fenders. Mm -hmm. we, we get them when we can. They, they come up periodically as far as availability is concerned. We just kind of just grab what we can. Yeah, it's not a consistent thing that we can kind of rely on, like player or performer or, or anything like that. But. You know, when we see it kind of come up, you know, available from from the the, the vendor dealer, we're like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll grab a few of those. It's very much kind of players great, but it, it it is a good one. Some PRS kind of suffer from that kind of clinical feel because they're, they're they're so good. Mm. You're like them, yeah. them and it's, Sir and a couple the are like that. Level it's the yeah, yeah. Think that's yeah, that's the perfect thing for it. So some of them can can be kind of victims of that, but that one is quite nice in its in its dinged up glory, I suppose. <laughs> Model or 2004, I think. Ah. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, it, it, it was confusing because there was the, the one dot. I knew they used to do the one dot. Yeah, well. yeah, trying to remember all the different specs, like the length of the heel and the, mm. the single dots and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think, I think we've got everything we need. Oh. Well, that was a load of fun. A huge thank you to the guys down in Everest for allowing me to film and play some really cool guitars. And I've left their website in the description below if you want to check them out further. I plan on making more videos like this in the future, going to different shops and looking at their guitars. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see that. And just be crystal clear, I'm not being paid or compensated by any of the retailers that I'm looking at. I'm just going guitar shopping and bringing you along with me. So with all that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.